Milwaukee Brewers manager Craig Council had some interesting words down in the winter meetings on Monday regarding the departure of their former all-star closer in Josh Hader. I want to dive into exactly what he said, how it made me feel, and how maybe it should make you feel, especially heading in to 2023 with multiple questions surrounding current players. Plus, later on in the show, I'm going to give you guys three names that I want the Milwaukee Brewers to go out and sign to make them a better team in 2023. Stay tuned in. You are Locked On Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Brewers fans, welcome back into the Locked On Brewers podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Brewers your first listen each and every day. I cannot tell you again how much I appreciate that. Do not forget, we are free and available on all podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, and of course, there are so many others. You can also follow the show on Twitter, at Locked On Brewers. You can now head over to Facebook and search at Locked On Brewers. You can hit the like button, get our stuff right on your Facebook feed, and also do not forget, we are so close to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Please go on YouTube, search at Locked On Brewers, check out all of the videos, and you can also hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it so very much. And, and again, I am your host. I am Brandon Snide. I am a lifelong, just like you, Milwaukee Brewers fan, coming to you just minutes, 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 minutes away from American Family Field. Of course, that is home to our Milwaukee Brewers. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon underscore Snide. With the holidays right around the corner, out everybody's out holiday shopping, meeting family and friends out. I appreciate you guys for letting me steal some of that time to sit here and talk. Sometimes it's rant. Sometimes it's good therapy <laughs> to talk about our Milwaukee Brewers. And again, as you know, Locked On Brewers is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I mentioned it at the top of the tease here with Craig Council. He did speak. He was on MLB Network's uh, show following a day of winter meetings down there in San Diego. And he had some interesting words regarding the Josh Hader trade that took place August 2nd last year at the trade deadline. Again, Brewers fans, baseball fans, everybody remembers exactly what happened. Josh Hader goes and the Brewers get a handful of uh, prospects, a couple of them breaking the Brewers top 10 prospects right now. So you know, the trade itself is to be determined exactly who won. Hader struggled a little bit there in San Diego. Obviously the Milwaukee Brewers struggled as a team following his departure, but I wanted to go over uh, the manager, Craig Council's quote and exactly what he said. Again, Craig Council was on MLB Network's uh, post show talking about exactly what happened, how it transpired, maybe why it transpired. So we're just going to dive into exactly what manager Craig Council said. And again, I am quoting him. He says, quote, we probably all underestimated the impact of the trade. He was a huge part of our success. We had to make a very difficult decision regarding, frankly, finances and managing players and when they are becoming free agents. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. We have to live with that. That's how it is going to have to be. That is how we are going to be able to sustain success. It is not easy what we have done in the past. Tough decisions are part of the success. We didn't get that one right. Well, I'll agree with that last sentence. We didn't get that one right. But again, I think that, I, to be fair to Craig Council, to be fair to then GM David Stearns, the, the jury's still out on that trade. I Right now, sure, it, it's not a good trade. But again, if Ruiz, if Glasser, if these guys turn into – you know, playable players, you know, good, formidable players. And, you know, we'll see exactly and, and, and see the trajectory of where Josh Hader, Josh Hader's heading into uh, next season. But again, I, right now, yeah, sure. Craig Council, we didn't get that one right. How to, maybe that's how he feels about guys that he, that Josh Hader was sent for, Robert Glasser, Ruiz. Again, the jury's still out. I'm going to be fair to those players. Um, but I wanted to get to a, po- a part here where it says, uh, let me find it here. It says where he's talking about regarding, frankly, finances. It was a very difficult decision regarding, frankly, finances and managing players and when they are becoming free agents. Is that where we are as Brewers fans? 
Is that where we are as Milwaukee, as a Milwaukee baseball team? Is that where we're at? Is that who we are? Again, that might be reality, but that sucks. Because basically what that's saying is we got them. We'll go out and get them. We'll grow them down in Nashville and Biloxi and we'll have a great time. But when they get good, when they get really good, we're done with them because we just can't afford them. Is that where we're at as Brewers fans? Is that as as an organization? Because I'll tell you right now, and that sucks. That sucks. And you heard Hunter Renfro make a comment about Milwaukee being cheap. I hate hearing that stuff. I'm a Brewer fan, man. I don't want to hear that stuff. That sucks. I want to compete. I want a championship. I want to win. And I don't want to hear, you know, we had to make a decision based off of finances and when they become free agents. Because to me, that sounds exactly like another bite of the apple that was rotten, that you failed as an organization, as a team, as an ownership, as a management. I'm curious if they even tried to approach Josh Hader with a contract. And maybe they did, and maybe, but maybe they didn't. If you remember, the Brewers started out so good that year, uh, just well a year ago at 32 and 18. I mean, they ended up finishing the year 54 and 58, just a terrible uh, finish. Um, but if you are a fan, and I'm assuming anyone listening to this podcast probably is, how does that make you feel in regards into the way the Brewers manage their players? Now, they went out and traded for Christian Yelich, and they extended him. The jury's out on Corbin Burns. We'll get to Corbin Burns because I got a bone to pick with some of you in regards to the show yesterday about Corbin Burns. Brandon Woodruff is still out there. You go out and trade for Willie Adamas, according to Bob Nightingale of USA Today. They are trying to keep him. They are trying to retain him. Uh, Again, we talked about the Hunter Renfro comments. It isn't the first time a player has mentioned Milwaukee being quote-unquote cheap. How does that make you feel as a paying customer, as a fan? And I know if you're like me, you make your summer plans around Brewers games. You make your summer nights around Brewers games. You make your Sunday afternoons, your family plans around Brewer games. And I had somebody once correct me saying, the Brewers didn't have 3 million three million fans in the gate last year. You're right. They had 2.4 million fans in the gate. That's still pretty darn good. That's good enough to be 14th in all of Major League Baseball. You're ahead of teams like the Chicago White Sox, Chicago being a major market, the Philadelphia Phillies, who just lost in the World Series. Again, another major market. The Washington Nationals, World Series champions in 2019, a major market. Arizona, maybe not as major as the other ones, but that's still a big market. And they just finished behind the teams of the Los Angeles Angels. Now I get it. It's it's the Angels. The Dodgers run that city. That's still a very large market. The Chicago Cubs. Chicago Cubs only had 200,000 more fans in their attendance. Again, not such a great year for Chicago, but that's a major market. And they just finished behind the San Francisco Giants, which is out there in the Bay Area, that team. Again, a major market. I'm not saying the Brewers are a major market. I'm not saying the Brewers should operate like a major market. But when you got the guys, when you have the players, it's at some point, if you are an owner of this team, what do you want to be known for? Do you want to make continue to, to, to take a bite out of the apple? Do you want to continue to be there, be close, hang up those wild card uh, banners up in, uh, in the, uh, at American Family Field? Again, this may sound like a spoiled fan because the Brewers have gone to the playoffs the last four out of five years. I want a championship. People told me as a Bucs fan, we could never win a championship because we were a small market. That was put to bed. The Brewers can win a World Series here. They have the support. They have the support of the fans. The fans are here. They're there. 2.4 million fans packed American family field just two years after a pandemic. The fans are coming. Merchandise is flying off the shelf. I don't want to hear that there's no money to be operated because that's a lazy excuse. And if you're not willing to spend the money, then sell somebody, sell it to somebody that's willing to do that because we deserve it. 
Fans of this city deserve it. Playoffs are fun. Game 163s are fun, even though they're stressful as hell. They're fun. But again, I want to win. And if you're telling me we have to make decisions off of what they could potentially be in the market, that's BS. That's BS. Give me somebody that's willing to do, because I'll tell you what now, if you bring a championship to the city, you've seen it with Milwaukee, with the Bucks. It follows you. Okay, it follows you. Again, you got to have a guy like Giannis on your team, but the Brewers could have that. They have those guys. They're marketable guys. Willie Adamas is a marketable guy. Corbin Burns, a marketable guy. You got tons of talent down in AAA coming up to the major leagues. You got guys. If you're going to lose, lose. Don't lose before you lose, if that makes sense. Don't lose and give up all stars, MVP candidates, because Cy Young candidates, because you think they're going to make a certain amount of money in the open market. As a fan, that pisses me off, and it should piss you off too. Because this is a team, this is a city that deserves a damn championship at American Family Field. Brewers have been through a lot of hell. And this is our golden age of baseball, and it's time we get a championship or at least find somebody that is willing to go out there and try. Now, again, talked about Craig Council, about the possibility of playing some younger prospects. We have talked about it on this show, about guys that could come up, uh, Jackson Chorio, Bryce Terrain, Joey Weimer, Garrett Mitchell was up here. But he did name drop somebody yesterday. Uh, was it was not yesterday. It was on Monday regarding who could potentially be playing in 2023. Who exactly did he name drop? Some of you may be surprised. Some of you may not be surprised, uh, but he could be playing in the majors next year. And again, we'll get to that. But one thing that you should definitely not be surprised is this is by the safety of your home at lockdown brewers. We believe home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays this season. Give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, simply safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering, yes, you guys listening to this show, Locked On Brewers listeners, 44% off a new security system. But don't put this off. And here's why I'm going to tell you exactly why I do it and why I have it and why I, I absolutely love it. For number one, their crystal clear HD security ca system uh, camera feeds are incredible. Their wide range of high tech sensors is incredibly awesome telling you guys it's it's fun I, I just sit there sometimes and just watch my yard if my, i'm watering my grass or whatever i just purchased my new home and it was one of the very fir uh, first few things i did i oh, i added simply safe to my home i wanted to keep my family safe it helps me sleep with peace of mind knowing my family is secure for example the other couple of weeks ago i was at work i was notified by the 24 7 hour monitoring agents that they thought somebody had a break in it was just a window that was left open uh, it turned out to be a, a false alarm. Everybody was safe. Nonetheless, Simply Safe was there and they had my back and they will have yours too. They were named to the best home security system of 2022 by News and World Report for a third year in a row. Check them out now at simplysafe.com. Thanks for making Locked On Brewers your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you guys are no strangers here at the locked on brewers podcast. I've been taking over this podcast. What's going, we're going on a week now. Uh, we have looked at some prospects that are coming through the brewers farm system, We've, we've name dropped a handful of them. We've, we've argued about some of them. Uh, and again, who we, we also debated exactly who we may see, who we may not see. How about we talk about some free agents that are on our wish list? Now, you guys know it. You can look at the schedule. It's December 7th. Christmas is a little less than three weeks away. And according to GM Matt Arnold, the Brewers, quote, have been busy. Uh, so again, you can take that for what it's worth. I guess we'll see exactly what that means. But in the meantime, I have three guys right now on my wish list that I would like the Milwaukee Brewers to add. Now, again, I'm on, I'm aware 
that a lot of these, probably most of these, are unlikely. Maybe they're unlikely. I think one of them's possible. Um, but I'm going to give you guys some names that I've been kind of looking at and researching. I thought about it last year with the season ending, exactly where the Brewers' strengths are, where their weaknesses are, where they could fill in uh, spots in the roster. The first name I'm going to bring up to you, you're not going to like, because I don't like it, Wilson Contreras. He should be on my list, especially with his five and a half war last, <laughs> last season, which I believe was near the top for his position. But I'm going to tell you right now, as a Brewers fan that despises anything in Illinois, uh, other than raising canes, uh, I I will take a step away from the Wilson Contreras, even though we could use him at the catcher position, especially a right uh, power uh, hitting bat. But I'll pass on it. So I'll go with J.D. Martinez. How do you guys feel about that one? Again, nothing glamorous. Great, great, great player. Uh, again, he could be a DH here in Milwaukee. Again, we could have that be for Jesse Winker. But again, I just don't know where the neck injury, where the recovery is for Jesse Winker. And you look at J.D. Martinez, a guy that is consistently at 275 batting average. He had 16 home runs last year, batted in 62 runs, 790 OPS, you know, 117 OPS plus, playing at American Family Field. He was an all-star last season. He's an, he's an older player. I understand that. I believe he's going to be 36 years old. But again, could just be a bridge for your upcoming talent coming through the minor league system. If they're ready, great. If they're not ready, well, you have somebody to rely on. And exactly how the Brewers compete in 2023 would obviously question this, but we're just going to have some fun with it nonetheless. So that's a guy I would add uh, for the DH. And, and, and I got another guy Brewers fans are probably familiar with. You look at your old friend, our old friend, Zach Granke. Now, again, the market's kind of out on him. I'm not exactly sure where he fits in as far as the market goes. You know, he could fill in that mid starter role, maybe that three, four spot. Obviously he's not going to take over Corbin Burns. You would imagine Brandon Woodruff's going to get number two. Again, you got Ashby. Maybe you got Ethan small, unless you're going to use Ethan small out of the bullpen. Maybe use Ashby out of the bullpen like they did last year. What are you going to do with Jason Alexander? Again, these are some minor questions here, but Granky would just, he would fill in a spot immediately and you mix him in with those guys. A 2.6 war last year, 3.6 ERA. Uh, only started 26 games, but did pitch 137 innings. Again, kind of like what I was talking about with the J.D. Martinez. He's a little bit of a bridge guy. You're not going to probably use him, you know, after next year. I believe he's going to be 38 or 39. But maybe it gives you time to see what you have in Robert Gasser, you know. Maybe maybe it's time to see. It gives you, gives you at least a little bit of a – a break in, 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 in that bridge to, to get to some of your younger guys. Again, he's, <laughs> he's familiar with Milwaukee. He's a name that we know. He knows, you know, knows the clubhouse. He knows Craig council. Maybe it's somebody you could go into. I don't, again, the market's not really out on him yet. Um, but again, I'm also not really sure where the direction the brewers are going in, but if you're filling in for a spot, that's somebody that I could see uh, that I would like to see the brewers go out and get. Now I'll go, in kind of in the same position, but we're going to go with a closer this time because I'm not sure exactly what you're going to do if you're the Milwaukee Brewers and, and, and in the closer position. Now, again, Devin Williams was there after the Josh Hader trade. Probably the one player who was affected the most in the Josh Hader trade was Devin Williams. Again, is he the answer in your ninth inning? It certainly didn't seem like it last year, but you put him in that eighth inning, he's pretty darn good. I believe rookie of the year. I mean, he, he's pretty lights out. Uh, in that spot. So do you need a closer? So again, do you need a middle reliever? Again, you got some decent middle relievers here in Milwaukee. We'll go down the list with Hobie Milner. What do you got in Jason Junk, uh, who was acquired in the Hunter Renfro trade, Trevor Kelly, Jake Cousins, who I'm still so high on. I'm very high. When you guys listen to this podcast and we finally get to going with the with the games and and recapping them and, and going over matchups and, and previewing series is Jake cousins is I love him. He's, he's one of my favorite uh, pitchers, Peter Strzokli. He's another one. Uh, again, what are you going to do with Aaron Ashby, Ethan small, you got options, uh, but I don't think you have, you know, you you're in, you're filled too much in those positions to say no to maybe a closer type guy or a middle reliever guy. So I'm going to give you two for one. I gave you JD Martinez, I gave you Zach Greinke. That was a fun one because I think 
Brewers fans have good feelings about Zach Greinke. He's a little bit of an odd character, but nonetheless, most Brewer fans like Zach Greinke for what he did here in Milwaukee. But I'm going to give you two ones, and they're two former Cubs. And again, I apologize. This is like three Cubs now, including Wilson Contreras, but I don't want Wilson Contreras. I just said he would be nice to have. But I'll go with Andrew Chafin. He's a former Cub, middle reliever. Lights out last year. Posted a 2 3 ERA over 57 innings last year with the Detroit Tigers. He appeared in 64 games. A 1.169 whip. I think that'll be just fine. Uh, but again, with that being said, with the middle relievers, you also need a closer. So again, how do you guys feel about adding another uh, former Chicago Cub in Craig uh, Kimbrell. How do you feel about that? How do you feel? It's not the worst thing in the world, and I get it. He's had some up and down moments. Not the worst thing, you know, in the world to add a, a experienced closer. Again, we're unsure where Devin Williams is going to fill in. He's more of that guy where I think he likes that eighth inning. He did not seem comfortable at all last year in the closer uh, position and Kimbrell, he's only 34 years old. I think he still has some gas left in the tank for him. And and 63 games last year, his ERA wasn't nothing spectacular at just under four at three, 3.75. And he did pitch 60 innings with a 1.3 whip again, an all-star in 2021. He could fill a spot. That's I think we could all agree. Isn't a question is a question, right? I think all of us can agree that the closer position right now is, is kind of in question. Uh, but those are the guys that I have. Again, J.D. Martinez was was a is a wish. Uh, Zach Greinke would be fun. Andrew Chafin, I think, is more realistic. I think uh, Craig Kimbrell is probably going to demand more money. I'm exactly not sure exactly what the Brewers are going to do. And again, there's more questions out there roster wise. But again, it's December seventh, and we're just we're just having some fun with some players that uh, we would want to sign. And speaking of favorites. Are any of those betting favorites to sign with the Brew Crew? What do you think? No, not really, but it's fun to at least talk about. Speaking of betting favorites, let me tell you about my absolute favorite place to put a bet, betonline.net. Betonline.net is the number one source for your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds, trends of every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, you're a Bucks fan to soccer, World Cup, and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. I just checked the odds right before I started recording this podcast of where the Brewers were going to finish and how close they were to the top of the list for odds to win the World Series. All right, spoiler alert. It's not looking great, but that's all right. We can at least check out props and odds, and there's there's tons of other stuff to check out for the Milwaukee Brewers. And you're listening to this podcast. I assume you love podcasts. You can find all of those at Bet Online as well. They are the fastest and easiest ways to get your betting fix. Head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Quietly, the Milwaukee Brewers have added a couple guys to their current roster while losing an old friend to the Oakland Athletics. It's a sad, sad morning, Brewers fans. Sadly, the Brewers fans will no longer be able to say on base Jace as he inks a deal with the Athletics. I believe it was a one-year deal, but the Milwaukee Brewers did add some depth to their bullpen, uh, but we are going to at least cover some of those news before we end this podcast. They did sign infielder Eddie Alvarez to a minor league contract. That did include an invite to major league camp. There's a couple fun key uh things about Alvarez. He, believe it or not, he medaled in 2014 in the Olympics for the U S as a short track speed skater. And he actually medaled as well in the 2020 Olympics as part of team USA. So he's a guy that's kind of fun. And they also added another one in, let's see his name, Adonis Medina to a minor league contract. He's only 25 years old, pitched in 14 games in relief for the Mets last season primarily just a sinker slider guy. That's according to Todd Rosiak. He does add some bullpen depth, depth so I guess we'll see exactly where uh, the Milwaukee Brewers go, adding a few guys that just seem to be camp bodies, but again, we'll kind of see. Peterson kind of was the one that hurts. He was that guy that could play second, could play first, could play third. 
I'm sure he could play everywhere else you asked him. Uh, 33 year old does it's a two year deal. Sorry, a two year deal. Um, it, according to Todd Rosiak, it was something that the Brewers were hesitant to off uh, to offer to him. Again, another clubhouse guy, another glue guy, another utility guy, off the market out of Milwaukee, and another spot that the Milwaukee Brewers are going to have to fill. It's a big offseason here for Matt Arnold. Again, his first offseason as the Brewers general manager. He's got his work cut out for him. He he just I don't want to be critical of him, but again, I I want to see this team be successful. And speaking of successful, I got a bone to pick with a couple uh listeners of the podcast. And I love each and every one of you. Even if you criticize me, I still appreciate you because you're listening. And that's all I care about. And at the end of the day, we all want the Milwaukee Brewers to win. I'm a fan of the Brewers. Again, you're going to hear me say it just like you. Okay. It's, it's sometimes it's rare to have somebody do a podcast where they're a fan of the team. I'm one of them. I feel you. It hurts when they lose. It hurts me. Makes me happy when they win. I have the same feelings you have, but I had people over there. I call it the dark web over on Twitter that were bashing me because I said I wanted to pay Corbin Burns. And they said, why pay Corbin Burns? You just trade him. You got to trade him now and you got to get everything you can get for him. That's the mentality in Milwaukee, in my opinion, that needs to change. And that's the mentality that the ownership has been training you to think like. It's exactly what we talked about at the top of the show. Full circle here, folks. Same thing we talked about at the top of the show where you had Josh Hader. You had an all-star closer. Again, I don't know where they are. We're contract discussions. If I'm not mistaken, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that they hadn't even talked about contract. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. But that'd be something I'd be curious about. But that's the mentality that needs to stop. No, you do not let Corbin Burns walk. If you have the ability to sign him, you sign him. If you don't think having Corbin Burns anchor your rotation, who's only going to be 28 years old, while you have all this talent coming up in the minor leagues, again, Jackson Churio, who Craig Council mentioned could potentially play this year. Again, that's this year, 2023. Joey Weimer, Garrett Mitchell was up here last year. Astore Ruiz, who's going to be up, who was up here last year, who's going to be up here to start this year. Bryce Terrain, who's going to potentially be your future second baseman. Why wouldn't you want an ace and a stud, a Cy Young, a winner, a proven winner to anchor your bullpen, even if it takes 25, 30% of your payroll? You're going to have a lot of those guys under contract for years to come. If you want to win, that's how you win. You don't let guys like that walk out. You saw exactly what happened in the Josh Hader trade. You saw how it went down. You saw what it did to that team. If Corbin Burns is dealt, in June, in July, in August, you don't think it's going to have the same effect? And then what? Think about that for a minute. Change your mentality. This city, you, me, we deserve a championship. You don't get it by keep giving away your best players in hopes that the prospects you get will turn into something. Change that mentality. We're better than that. Thank you all for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown Brewers podcast everywhere you get your podcasts. Again, we are on Twitter, and now we are on Facebook at Locked On Brewers. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon underscore Snide. Thank you for making Lockdown Brewers your first listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for your support. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Coming up on the next episode, I am going to continue to take a look at what the offseason look like, looks like for the Milwaukee Brewers. The winter meetings are about to wrap up. And again, we are going to continue to analyze and critique exactly what this roster could look like come April. Again, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you to put a big smile on that face, finish out the week strong, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. See you.